Hey there, it's Jordan with Status Coup. Delighted to be joined by Matthew Ho, uh, a, a U.S. Uh, military veteran uh, who is a Green Party candidate for the Senate in North Carolina, uh, who got way more, way more signatures than was actually required uh, to get on the ballot, had successfully gotten on the ballot uh, in uh, North Carolina, but shocker, uh, the Democratic Party uh, has now rigged it <laughs> against you, uh, and a court has basically uh, invalidated your signatures. Uh, let's just dumb it down for people. You got, uh, by my count, 22,000 signatures. Uh, the requirement uh, to get on the ballot was uh, just shy of 14,000. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, so that's a lot more. Yet the North Carolina Board of Elections just invalidated those signatures. Uh, can you explain what their reasoning was and what the Democratic Party in North Carolina's role was in uh, nudging the Board of Elections to that decision. Right. It, um, thanks for having me here, Jordan. Uh, this confirms, you know, what we understood and knew, and, and this validates why we run and why we want a multi-party democracy, because the two-party system is, it's corrupt, it's undemocratic, and it's harmful. And in our case, we collected 22,500 signatures. Uh, of those, nearly 16,000, uh, 15,953 were verified as valid signatures by the county boards of election. And uh, we only needed 13,865. So we were over by 2,100. We turned those signatures in on June 1st. Uh, the state board of elections has had 30 days to review them. And yesterday at the certification meeting, uh, in a, a, I mean, a brazenly partisan fashion. Uh, the argument that was extended was basically because there's a July 1st deadline as well in all of this. And so we met the requirement for signatures. We've met all our deadlines. We've cooperated fully with the state board of elections as, as well as the county boards of elections. And yesterday, um, along partisan lines, three Democrats to two, the state board of elections uh, chose not to certify us. Uh, this was a, a gross, uh, 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 a gross, uh, 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 you know, a uh, 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 preclusion of due process. Basically, their argument was that we've looked at your signatures for 30 days. We have found some irregularities. We need more time. But because tomorrow is July 1st deadline to certify, we don't have that time. So we are going to not certify you. And that was literally the argument that was used to not certify us. Uh, they, uh, we have been aware that there was uh, an issue with about 200 signatures. Those signatures, those 200 signatures never counted towards our validated signature. Uh, and then uh, we've worked closely with the State Board of Elections over the last 30 days in terms of what happened with those. What we think happened was two people had uh, turned in signatures to us that were fraudulent. And we've worked fully with the State Board of Elections on that because we were defrauded too. And so, you know, uh, what the state said is because or the state board of elections said because of this incident and because like when you turn in twenty two thousand five hundred signatures, you're going to have all kinds of different things that's that are occurring. We have to examine more signatures. And again, that was their argument for keeping us off the ballot for not certifying is that we need more time. There's not more time. So we're not going to certify you, even though none of none of what they were calling it the question had anything to do with the 15,953 signatures that were verified. All their issues were with signatures that had not been verified. And so that didn't count anyway towards uh, our certification. So it, it was it was amazingly uh, partisan. Uh, uh, people who've been observing politics for decades were stunned by it. And um, certainly I encourage people to go to the State Board of Elections website and view the video for yourself to see how partisan it was. I just want to understand it. I mean, I failed math once, so let me just get this straight. You hand in 22,000, you only need about 14,000. Mm -hmm. They find 200 that are irregular. That still leaves thousands exactly. of extra signatures. Right. They had 30 days to look right. through the signatures, but they wait until the, the last hour to say, yeah, well, because there's these you know, 200 that are uh, fishy. Uh, we're just, we, you know, we can't certify the overwhelming 
of amount that were already verified. This kind of sounds to me like, remember before the Iowa caucus, the Pete Buttigieg campaign yeah, complained yeah. that one person called for a poll, was not offered Buttigieg, so they spiked the whole poll. That's this right. kind of sounds yeah. like, to me, they're just looking for an excuse, but why would a board of elections, which is supposed to be nonpartisan, uh, invalidate all the signatures? Was there any interference or nudging from the state Democratic Party to the board of elections to try? Right, to exactly, and that's the other side of this story. And first of all, if they remember, who are the actual board members of the state board of elections. There's five of them, three Democrats, two Republicans, and they're appointed by the political party bosses in the state. And that's where their allegiance lays. These are not people who are appointed to the state board of elections because they are experts in election law or because they love democracy so much. No, they're appointed because they're loyal and they will do the right thing when it's called upon them to do so. And they certainly did that yesterday. What has been occurring in the last couple of weeks down here is that the Elias Law Firm, uh, which is Mark Elias's law firm, and people are familiar with, with Mark Elias. He was John Kerry, Hillary Clinton's, Kamala Harris's uh, general counsel, as well as uh, you know his. If you don't know Mark Elias, just go to his Wikipedia page and read through it. Um, but he is about he is their biggest attorney, arguably. Uh, the Democratic Party has this is their biggest law firm. They have there's no one in the bullpen after the Elias Law Group. And they brought them down here right away to deal with our campaign and our party certification. Uh, what has been happening in the last week and a half is that the state board of elections turned over our petitions to the Elias law firm uh, through a public records request, uh, ostensibly so that the Elias law firm could check the integrity of our petitions. What they did was they took the petitions, they matched them up with Democratic Party uh, 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 databases and other records as well to find phone numbers. And they started calling and texting people who had signed our petition to get them to change, to get them to retract their signatures. I even got a text from them, and, you know, and said, uh, you know, asked me first off if I had signed it. And then it goes into a whole spiel about how if I keep my name on, this is going to cost the Democrats the election in November. Abortion is in the balance. You know, and I had a pretty straightforward one. We had many people who, first of all, were harassed. They were receiving uh, five, six phone calls a day. I saw a screenshot the other day of someone who had received four phone calls in about three and a half hours, uh, as well as two with the phone calls. The callers were identifying themselves as with the Green Party. So they are calling, they are saying with the Green Party, and then they were, were, I'm with the Green Party. And then they were asking people to take their names off the petitions. And we have that on recording. Um, additionally, people who had uh, said, no, I don't want my name taking off, uh, the Democratic Party sent, started sending people door to door. Uh, including the people who had said, I don't want my name taken off. They would just send someone to your door then. And so we've seen that over the last week or two. And over the last week or two, the Elias Law Firm, through this method, has been able to get 140 people or so to say, take my name off. Again, out of 22,500. So really not anything. And you know, one of the things I think people need to understand about how we ran our petition drive and why this is so upsetting and why I'm so angry about it, because it dis disperses the, 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 the work of a lot of really good people, people who are out there, everything from college students to grandmothers who are out there for hours and hours, weeks on end, co collecting these signatures for us. You know, but more than 95 percent of our signatures were collected by our people, by people who are part of our party, people part of my campaign, people who are part of our movement, you know, leftist, socialist, independents and not paid petitioners, not, you know, co outside contractors, so to say. And so one of the things is that as we collected 22,500 signatures um, and talked to thousands of more people while, while we were out there, the State Board of Elections never received one complaint about us. And so the State Board of Elections doesn't receive a complaint about us until the Elias Law Firm shows up in North Carolina from D.C. and starts doing what it's doing, you know, harassing people, bullying them, shaming, and most egregiously, fraudulently identifying themselves as the Green Party in order to get people to drop their names off of their off of the petition sheets. And so you see this relationship 
between the Democratic Party in North Carolina of, and, of course, with the Democratic uh, organizations in D.C., but with this law firm and then, of course, the coordination between the law firm and the state board of elections to get this done. And this is something we see all throughout the country. This is not unique. This is not unique to North Carolina. And this helps people understand why independent politics are in such a dire state, because you have this machine that has just a, a fortune of money behind it that is able to do this to independent or third parties. Well, it's very interesting. You know, you had the Democrats crowing about democracy uh, in uh, D.C. right now and the January 6th hearings, which, you know, to be clear, uh, there's validity that, you know, democracy yeah. is being threatened. Uh, Trump loyalists and Republicans right now are being inserted across the country in state legislatures. Uh, you also have them trying to remove election officials that uh, certify the election for Biden and trying to put in Trump loyalists, which is obviously an effort for the next election to, to try and uh, overturn election results. But I find it kind of hollow that all these Democrats are so concerned about democracy when what you're experiencing is kind of the Democratic Party using like Roger Stone dirty tricks, right. trying to remove a third party candidate uh, to basically, I, I guess, they, they find you to be a threat uh, that you could be competitive, that you could pull votes from them instead of, I don't know, providing policies that might help them win, even if you were running. Can you kind of talk about the hypocrisy here when yeah. they're throwing about, you know, democracy is in, in, under uh, assault? Yeah, no, absolutely. And this is something they've been doing for decades. And Mark Elias has a long history of this. You know, Mark Elias goes back to being John Kerry's general counsel in 2004, where they savagely attacked the Green Party, particularly Ralph Nader's campaign. And they I don't know if they pioneered, but they certainly established a lot of the efforts we're seeing now. You know, so one of the things that, you know, we, we see with the State Board of Elections is they'll say there's all these irregularities. And that's why we believe there may be more fraud or there could be more fraud, which is why we have to investigate further. Right. This is their whole argument. And, you know, what Elias does is provide them that cover like, oh, look, you know, this name. This was approved without a signature next to it. And again, kind of like you said before, Jordan, you know, like one or two things being pointed out to bring down the whole, you know. So if you look at what the state board of election says about, uh, where it, you know, this, there is this, there is this, there is this. Yeah. When you sum all that up, though, it's a handful of things. But because it's a handful of things, you can call it numerous. And numerous can mean whatever you want it to mean, which is what the state Board of Elections has chosen to do because they can use that as cover to deny us. And that just feeds again into that hypocrisy you're talking about, this idea that somehow they are standing on principle, that somehow what they are doing is defending the integrity of the electoral process because there are numerous uh, issues, you know, that they're there. We have to investigate this. Otherwise, we'd be, you know, uh, betraying our principles when the reality is that no, they're not standing on principle. They're standing on partisanship because any good faith assessment of what has occurred would see that, first of all, again, none of our verified signatures were ever shown to be invalid. That's what counts toward getting you on the ballot. And what they're talking about in terms of the, quote, numerous, unquote, instances of fraud are minor and they're separated. It's not like there is some type of coordinated syndicate. And the one instance of fraud we actually do know about we've been cooperating with them since they told us about we've given them everything we've had a great relationship with their investigations team you know what i mean so to be hit with this you know uh just the the malfeasance of it you know just the lying about it but then the hypocrisy as you were stating of we stand for democracy as they do what they're doing to us and as they've done to other candidates and campaigns and parties throughout the country. Yeah, it, it's nauseating. But again, it comes back to this is why we're doing it. This proves our point. This shows that the two party system is corrupt and undemocratic. It hurts the people. And, you know, the, the idea of what, what are they threatened by? They're not threatened by me. They're not threatened by the Green Party. They're threatened by who we represent. And they're threatened by the issues that we stand for. Housing, health care, jobs, climate, those are all things that threaten the big mo money donors of both the Democrats and the Republican parties. If those issues are on the ballot, if working class people are represented, 
that threatens the donors to the Democrats and the Republicans. And that's why they are scared of us. And that's why they don't want us on the ballot, because they don't want those issues. and They don't want working people to have a voice for them. And I um, mean, we see that. And that's, you know, that, that ties into the January 6th hearings, you know, and certainly let, you know, convict Trump and his ilk, you know, I mean, certainly. But the idea that we only have hearings about something that would never affect the major donors to the parties, where is a hearing on the wars that were built on lies. Where is the hearing for the, the catastrophic COVID response, right? I mean, there will never be hearings like we see for January 6th for anything that could potentially hurt the profits of the big donors to either the Democrats or Republicans. Because whatever happens with the January 6th hearings, that's not going to affect the profits of Pfizer or Raytheon or Monsanto or whoever. And lastly, uh you know, where do you go from here? Are there legal steps, legal remedies? Can people get involved to help? Uh, right. what, what is your next next step? Right. Yeah, no, no. Next, uh, um, very clearly, uh, we go to court. Uh, we'll, we're meeting over the next couple of days to figure out what those steps are and what that looks like. Uh, but certainly, uh, we go to court. And um, I mean, we were denied uh, due process as well as the fact, you know, in the sense of they never showed us the evidence. You know, one of the things that happened during the hearing was our attorney asked the chair of the State Board of Elections, he said, Mr. Chairman, any of what you're talking about, does any of that affect the verified signatures that we have? Again, the verified signatures being what you need to get on a ballot. Or are, all, are you just talking about things that were already thrown out by the counties? And he refused to answer. And then when our attorney followed up and said, you know, why are you refusing to answer? He turned off his microphone and muted him. I mean, that was the level of due process that was available to us yesterday, uh, you know, so as well as the fact that, yeah, we had achieved the number required and we were denied. Uh, so, uh, yes, we'll go to the we'll go to the courts and we will get on the ballot uh, that way. Uh, for people to help us and we need your help. Uh, you know, two things, you know, I just said we're going to court, so I need money. And if people believe in what we're doing, please help us. Go to MatthewHoferSenate.org and please donate what you can. And the second thing is please share this. Please let people know what's going on. Share our social media. Uh, share this interview. Uh, tell people about it. You know, and more importantly, I think what I what I how I understand it is personally tell people about it. It's, of course, tweet, Facebook, whatever. But talk to your friends. Talk to your family about this. You know, let people know directly how this affects them through these types of machinations of power that deny, you know, working class people any type of representation. And then lastly, I'll say, folks watching, support shows like Jordan's. You know, I mean, um, getting this story out, we get it out through people like Jordan who do this type of good reporting. Um, you know, I'm not getting on CNN to talk about this. Mm. So uh, please, uh, you know, support Jordan and others who are doing um, actual journalism as yeah. opposed to, you know, whatever we call it on the other things. And lastly, I'll just say, I, I think this is important because whether you're somebody uh, leading the charge for a third party or you're somebody just peripherally who's like, yeah, I mean, I'm more of a take over the Democratic Party, but I believe in democracy. It really doesn't matter which side of it you're on. You can't have democracy if all corners are rigged. If right. candidates running uh, in the Democratic primaries, it's rigged against them. Candidates running as a third party, it's rigged against them. I mean, how do you actually change anything if, if electorally, it, it's just every method is being yeah. rigged? Yeah, you know, and that's exactly what it was. It was rigged. I mean, if we had collected 50,000 signatures, it wouldn't have mattered. You know, it, 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 if we had collected 100,000, it would not have mattered. They chose to do this because they could do it. And that's what people understand. They, they, if they, they did it to us, they can do it to anyone else because they can. They simply chose to say no based upon this very specious argument that there could be more invest, there could be more fraud. We need more time to investigate, but we don't have more time to investigate, so we're not going to certify you. That was the logic that they followed. And that's very dangerous because that allows uh, those in power to simply continue to do as they will. And the thing about this, it was so brazen. It shows that, you know, their arrogance, not just not really their arrogance, but their confidence in what they're able to get away with. Absolutely.
Thanks for taking the time. Uh, we'll stay in touch. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks for watching, and make sure to tune in to Status Coup's daily live stream Monday through Thursday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time and Fridays at 4 o'clock Eastern Time.